Welcome to this CIS 101 video about modifying colors. As you can see, I have this decrease red function that I've written, and we're going to loop through every pixel in the pixels of the picture. And there's a get red function that will we'll give it a pixel and it will return us the value of the red in that pixel. Then we'll just multiply that value by the 0.6 and that will be the new red value. Now, if we multiply a number by one, we get the same number back. If we multiply a number by something greater than one, we'll get a bigger number back. If we multiply the number by a value between zero and one, or less than one and greater than zero, then we're gonna make the value smaller. So this is gonna make the amount of red in our pixel a little smaller, and then we'll use the set red function to set the red of the pixel to that new value. Now I've already picked a file and read that file off of the disk, and I picked a beach file, so I want to reduce the amount of red in this picture. So all I have to do is load my program and run it, call my function decrease red of my beach. And we can explore our beach again or repaint it. And you can see that it looks a lot uh, more blue the, the, because the red has been decreased. So there are a few things that we can do to uh, write this in a fewer number of lines of code. So first, we don't have to come up with a new name. We can just use the same name we did before with r. And so this reads, take what r is, multiply it by 0 0.06, and erase r and replace it with the new value. And um, then we just put r there. Now, we don't even have to do uh, this on a separate line. We can cut that and paste it right there. And that way, we do the calculation in line in this function. And in fact, we don't even have to come up with a name at all. We can get our red. Um, we can make that function call and replace it right there. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to do this. I'm just showing you that you can type it in fewer lines of code, but this might be a little less readable. So you, if you want to do what you can understand the most, and if this is less understandable, then do it the longer way. It really doesn't matter. The computer still has to do the same amount of work, whether you use um, the first example I showed you or you use this example. It's just that this is quicker to type. Now, you might even decide to do something like this. We'll get our red, decrease it, and assign that to R, and then set the red on the next line. So there are lots of different ways to do the same thing. So hopefully um, you'll understand that it, there isn't one exact way to accomplish your task. There's lots of different ways that you can do it. Now we have uh, get red and set red. We also have the other um, primary colors, get green or set green and uh, get green. And then we also have a, a set blue and get blue functions as well. Now, if you notice, when I type these names in, they turn this uh, kind of a purple color, I guess. And that color uh, means that the functions are uh, built in. Now, the purple color actually means the functions are part of Jython that work on pictures and sound. But those are built-in functions. So that's one good way to know that you typed it in is if it changes to the right color. So you noticed when I misspelled this and it said green instead, that it wasn't the right color. So with these functions that are built in, they should probably change color. And that helps you uh, helps reassure you that you've typed it in correctly. Now, another thing that we have are the blue color um, in uh, these uh, three places. And the blue color means that these are reserved words. Reserved words mean that the word means something in uh, Python. 
For example, def is used to define a function. For is part of the for loop and the same with in. So we cannot use those as names. So I cannot use for as a name. If I try to do that, it will uh, give me an error because it's thinking, oh, this is going to be a for loop. And then it gets tricked with the equal sign. It's like, oh, that doesn't look like a for loop. So if your name turns blue, then you have to come up with a new name. But if you're trying to do a function in Python and it's blue, then that means you typed it in correctly. I want to point out to you this menu right here. And when you go to pixels, you can see all the different functions that you can ask a pixel. You can ask it to get its in color, and that includes the red, green, and blue aspects of a color. You can set the color, but you better give it a color when you set it. You can get the red, you can get the green, you can get the blue, you can set the red, green, and blue, and you can get the x and y coordinates. Now, by the way, the number that you get out of this will be a number between 0 and 255. Hopefully you remember back in your encoding lecture that, the, that we use one byte for each color, and that means that there are a total of 256 different values for that uh, that we can store for each color. And if we have three colors, that means it's 256 times three, and that's the total number of colors that we can uh, set each pixel to. Now um, you can, so you can go up to this functions and you can find different things that you can, different functions that you can uh, um, call on different items. These are functions that you can call with pictures and these are functions that you can call with pixels. And if you click on one, you get a little window that explains it and it even shows you how to use the function. Let's say that we want to change two colors at the same time. So we want to decrease the red and the green at the same time. So we could just uh, step one, get the red and decrease it, and then set the red, get the green, decrease it, and set the green. And so let's go ahead and see how that looks. Uh, I didn't change the name of my function. It's still called decrease red. I should probably call it decrease red and green, but we'll just uh, run that function. And before I run this, I'm just uh, showing you, I read a fresh copy off of the disk and I pulled it up so we can see it. And now I'll go ahead and decrease the red. And you can see um, I made a little mistake there. So when you do that, just read this when it says it takes two arguments and it was only one given. Arguments are another name for input. And I only gave it one input, but when we set the green, just like when we set the red, we need the pixel and the value that we want to set the pixel to. So go ahead and uh, we can run that again. I'm just pressing the up arrow to run the last line and hopefully that'll work. And then we can repaint our beach and we can see now that our beach uh, looks uh, slightly different, uh, definitely a lot darker because we reduced the red and the green out of this picture. Now I'll show you this other example. It does the exact same thing. We're going to get the red and decrease it. We're going to get the green and decrease it. And we're going to get the blue. Notice we're not decreasing the blue. Then we'll call make color, pass in the smaller red and the smaller green values, leave the blue the same, and that'll make a new color. And then we could set the color to that new color. So this function does exactly what the previous function uh, did. So let's go ahead and uh, load our program. And let's go ahead and lo load a fresh copy of our picture off of the disk. And just to show you why this works is I haven't changed file. File still is the path of my beach picture. And um, I'll go ahead and load a fresh copy off. And then we'll run decrease red to run that function. And then we'll go ahead and explore our beach. And you can see that the, it looks exactly the same as before. So this function and the previous function do the same thing. Uh, so you can decide what way you want to do it. Now there's a lot more examples in your book. So make sure you look in the book, look in the examples, see if you can figure out what each example does read the text around the example, 
uh, the explanation on how the example works so you can get a good idea how these functions work. Then in your homework, you'll get to practice creating your own functions that do different things to the colors of a picture.